Hi, my name is Chad Dombrova, and I'm going to show you how PyMill and IPython can turn Maya's Python interpreter into a useful development and troubleshooting environment. So, normally, if we wanted to launch Maya's Python, we use MayaPy. So, from here, if we want to use Maya.commands, we import Maya.standalone, and then once that's imported, we initialize. And once it's initialized, we can import Maya.commands. Now, aside from this taking three lines and set in something that should have been done in one line, uh, the environment that we have now to use Maya is actually crippled. There's uh, our Maya.env hasn't been parsed, our user setup.mel hasn't been run, uh, none of our option variables or uh, other normal mel scripts that get sourced uh, in GUI mode are also not sourced. So PyMill makes this a lot easier. Once we run MayaPy, all we have to do is import PyMill, and all that stuff happens for us. So once we import PyMill standalone, our Maya environment is going to be exactly as it would be if we had launched Maya in GUI mode. So there won't be any of the inconsistencies that you would normally see if using Maya, Maya standalone. <clears throat> so but what, we, what I want to talk with you about is how PyMel can work together with IPython to make an incredibly powerful development environment. So, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to run IPyMel. So this is the hybrid PyMel slash IPython environment. And uh, right away, just by running this, we get IPython running under MayaPy, and PyMel is automatically imported for us. So we can run the ls command and we see I mean, these are all the lists of our uh, the list of all objects in our live environment and right away you see that the way that Py uh, ipython prints things out is in this sort of nice organized list um, and that's one of the features of ipython some other features of ipython are tab completion of uh, paths so these are paths on my system also you get tab completion of python objects so for instance we could make a list and then tab complete L dot append. So that's one of the methods of a list. Okay. So right away we have all these features that IPython gives us, but PyMill adds additional Maya specific features to this. So for instance, the very first one that you'll need is the DAG command. So the DAG command is sort of like your command line outliner. So we get a quick list of all the DAG objects that are in our scene. And these are live objects. We can save this scene out and or open up new scenes, modify these, add new objects. So, for instance, um, <clears throat> we can t we can we also get tab completion of uh, object strings. So, for instance, let's say we wanted to select uh, create a pi node of a, pers a perspective shape. So we can tab complete, tab complete some more, and now we have our object. And since this is a PyMill object, we can also uh, get other attributes from it. So for instance, it's a camera, so we know that that, that will have a focal length. So we can tab complete that, um, run get on it, and there we are. That's the focal length. So in addition to tab completing attributes, like I've just shown you, we can tab complete the methods that are on the object, because this perspective shape is a PyMill camera node that has a bunch of methods on it that pertain to cameras. So we can type get, hit tab, and now we see a list of all the methods on this node. So for instance, we could you know, get the film aperture and get the clipping planes. Um, in this case, let's type get parent and run that, and we see that we get the parent node, which is the transform above it. So we can string together things here. So from that, we can get translate. Ooh. Translate. And that's a vector. And you, you see here on accident that uh, we get a um, nicer feedback of uh, our exceptions. So it gives us a little uh, context of the exceptions and color coded. So in addition to this, um, we can we have another command that we get, and that's open f. So this will open a file. You can give it a path. No need to give uh, quotes around it. But um, the real useful part is we can tab complete with a dash. And that will give us a list of recently opened files. And this is taken directly from the list that you would have in Maya, so recent files. 
Um, <clears throat> so we're going to open number three, because this is my little IPyMail test. And open that up, and now we run the dag command again. And we can see I've added a few additional additional things here. So there's a group two, um, some a cube and sphere. And I'm going to use this scene to demonstrate a few more features. So, for instance, we can say duplicate and tab complete that guy. And then let's tab complete uh, the name of an object. We're going to duplicate group one. Okay. Run dag again. And we've seen now we duplicated this group. So here's this whole new set down here. And these little stars tell us that these names are no longer unique. That's important to know because it means you need to refer to an, a unique path to that object. So if we wanted to get this p cube one and not this one, we know that we run if we run select, we're going to have to say group one and then p cube one. So now that is selected. So now that's selected, we can demonstrate something else. Let's create an instance of what we have selected. Just take the first one and run dag again. And now we see uh, the dag command also shows us that now this is an instance of this. This is the first instance and this is the second instance of our PQ shape. So these remain with their non-unique identifiers. Okay, so now that we've shown you that, let's show you uh, some troubleshooting tools, some debugger tools. So we're going to import a module I made called tester and we're going to run the main function of tester. Oh, so we got an error. So once again you see we got the trace stack here and it shows us uh, this is where we entered, ran the main command, that ran foo. Foo got into a, went into a loop here and uh, we were trying to set this translate attribute but we got an error. The error shows up in PyMill. Now, the error isn't necessarily with PyMill because PyMill wraps all of your Maya commands so you're always going to end up partially in PyMill when you when you get a, a trace stack like this. So what we can do is we can run percent debug, and this is a feature of IPython. So we run that, it drops us into an interactive debugger, and we can use the up and down commands to move up and down the trace stack. So right now we're in PyMill. We hit up, and now we're inside our tester, inside the foo loop. So now we can take a look at X and see, okay, that's camera front shape. Um, X.translate we were trying to run, but that's uh, no attribute or method. So in this case, our problem was that we were trying to use X as a transform, but it's actually a camera. So we would have to run get parent to fix our, our bug. The real point here is that we we can use this debugger at any point that we want us. We can move along as normal, doing our, our you know, normal tasks, and then boom, we hit a bug, we hit a trace back, and we can just drop into the debugger immediately, see what the problem was, and then hit Q to get back out. So that's an incredibly useful tool for developers. So, if you like what you see here, you should ask Autodesk to add a Python interpreter into our Maya GUI because all this stuff is great and it's really useful to troubleshoot uh, bad scenes, get into them quickly, uh, de develop and debug modules that you're working on. But ultimately, it would be most useful if we had a Python interpreter inside our GUI so that we can move back between the best of the both worlds. I mean, we have the script editor for certain tools, you have your, your Python interpreter for, for other tasks. So be sure to let Autodesk know that this is something you like. And you don't have to necess they don't necess necessarily have to introduce IPython. As long as they have a regular Python interpreter, IPython can drop into that and turn it into an interpreter on steroids. And PyMill will work with it and everything. So be sure to go out and check out the new PyMill and uh, the new IPy IPyMill that comes with it. Thanks a lot.